All right, Shalom. Well. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and blessings to the whole elect teaching this word in all sincerity and truth. You know, in a sincere hopes that we may edify and feed the flock and the lambs of Yahweh Shai. And this is going to be a quick, um, you know, lesson going into the beginning part of Revelation, the 20th chapter, you know, touching on a little bit of the Renaissance, uh, the Renaissance period, which the word Renaissance means rebirth and specifically dealing with the rebirth of Esau, Edom's power structure on the earth, where, you know, that's that's headed by the wicked that the Bible speaks of. And we know who the wicked is in the Bible, which we're going to get into all of that in the scriptures. But, you know. Without further ado, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna open up with Revelation the twentieth chapter because we're in the time now. Um in fact, let me not open up with that, let me open up with Jeremiah forty nine and ten. We're in a time where Esau is being exposed. Alright, for the devil that he is. Okay, and the things that he has done and is doing on the earth. Um and the scriptures speak about the red horse, the power was given unto him that sat there and to take peace from the earth. When you go into the Hebrew word for Edom, it's Adawam, which means red. So that's talking about Esau, Edom's power structure. All right. And he does nothing but take peace away from the earth. And that's why you're seeing great misery on the earth today. And that's why we have to expose this devil. All right. The scripture says that when the wicked are in authority, the people mourn. All right. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear fool, the people mourn. Okay. So the people are mourning right now. All right, this is Jeremiah uh, chapter 49, verse 10. He says, but I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places. So all of the secrets and the lies of Esau are being exposed. For, you know, starting with the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, you know, that are revealing this devil. Okay. And you've got the different camps that are out there as well, teaching this truth, you know, um, pretty much revealing this devil. All right, but first and foremost, and that's why we say double honors to the apostles and the elders who keep the doctrine 100. All right, and they don't add or take away. They don't add or take away from the doctrine or from the scriptures. All right, and the scriptures condemn that. See, scriptures say if you add or take away the words that are written in this book, the Lord will take, you know, add on to you the plagues that are written in this book. So this this ain't nothing to play with, you know. I mean, in this truth, it says, and he shall not be able to hide himself. So Esau. We're living in a time now where Esau, you know, his demise is at, is coming. And he's not able to hide himself, okay, as he's being revealed. Okay, because this 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 devil rules in, in secrecy. You've got the uh, Illuminati. There was a time where people didn't know who they really were or what was really going on behind the scenes. But now, you know, uh, they're being exposed through the spirit. All right, and that alone should let you know that they, the, the, the fact that they're being exposed, you know, that their power came from their secrecy. But now that they're being exposed, they're losing that power. OK, and that's why they want to shut us up. That's why the scriptures speak about great fear fell upon them, which saw them. All right. Meaning what? Starting with the apostles and the elders. We're out there teaching this word, man. All right. Going all the way back to uh, Rabbi Abba Bivens. All right. All the way down onto this present day. This man is being exposed. Okay, and that's why the scripture says, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. All right, so, and yeah, he will become a spoil, man. All right, and Esau's going into captivity, he's going into slavery, and there's nothing that he or anyone else can do to stop that. All right, so without further ado, let's get into Revelation 20 and 1. It says, and I behold an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. Now, that angel... You know, we believe for the spirit represents Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, because, you know, when you go to Revelation, the first chapter and the 18th verse, it speaks about. And these words are written in red. All right. And Yahweh Shai said, I am he that liveth. Right. Revelation 1 and 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So that's why. We believe that that's talking about Yahweh Shai. All right. So going back to Revelation 20, it says, and one, it says, and I saw an angel come down from heaven. All right. Having the key of the bottomless pit. All right. And a great chain in his hand. That bottomless pit represents Europe. All right. And why is it known as the bottomless pit? It's known as the bottomless pit because, you know, Europe pretty much has to import, you know, everything. It has to import everything that it gets because, 
you know, its land is not that, uh, it's not very, uh, its soil is not rich, that rich in nutrients, man. And that's why it's known as the bottomless pit. Okay. Now you might say, well, how can you call uh, the bottomless pit a land? Well, let's go to uh, Second Ezra, the fifth chapter. All right, where um, you know a pit is likened unto a land. All right, Second Ezra five and uh, was it twenty three on down? And it says, and and said, O Lord, that thou, it said, O Lord, Yahweh, that thou that that bearest rule of every wood of the earth and of all the trees thereof, thou hast chosen thee one only vine. And of all the lands of the whole world that has chosen thee one pit. And that's how you know that that bottomless pit is talking about lands. Okay. And all of a sudden, that's Satan. All of a sudden, now it's starting to get real noisy. Let me just wind up these windows. I've only got the windows down because it's really hot. It's a hot day today, but... Wind these windows up. Alright, so continuing on. And it says, and of all the lands and of the whole world that has chosen thee one pit. Okay. And of all the flowers that are of one lily. So, you know, that's how we can prove that the bottomless pit is talking about lands. Alright. So going back to Revelation 20 and 1. And it says, having the key of the bottomless pit. Okay. And the great chain in his hand. And that chain, you know, represents being bound. It represents slavery. Okay. Um. And how can we prove that? And, and you know what? The, these these heathen nations, starting with Esau, Edom, they're about to go into hardcore slavery. And the first crop of slaves are going to be the elites of Esau, Edom. Okay? How can we prove that? Let's go to Psalms, you know, uh, 149, is it? And, uh, yeah, let's start from verse 5. It says, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Okay. So we're supposed to be joyful. You know in the fact that the Lord said if we're going to glory. Let us glory in the fact that we understand if and know of him. Alright. That he exercises judgment in the earth. Righteousness. Judgment in the earth. Loosely paraphrasing. That's in Jeremiah 9 and 23. Alright. And we're singing loud. Man. We're, you know. We're just liking this onto a song. You know. When you are out there teaching the word. Or when we put in these videos up. We're singing the same song, the same song that the apostles taught us to teach through the Spirit. You know, this is a this is a song that we're singing, man. Okay, and you know the scripture said that the wicked of our people, you know, they're like children sitting in a marketplace saying, "We have piped unto you and you have not danced; we have mourned unto you and you have not lamented." So this is like an unto a song that we're singing, and we're piping it. But you know, the wicked of our people, they can't get down with this song. All right. Anyway, not to deviate too much from the topic, it says, "Let the praise of the of." Let the praises of Yahweh be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. All right, and we're gonna roll around, man. We're gonna, man. We're gonna do some stuff in the kingdom, man. All right, a sword's in our hand. Okay, it says to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. So vengeance is scriptural. And you got people talking about God is all love, God is all love. But what about vengeance? Is it not written? Is it not written in the scriptures? Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, saith the Lord. Of course. So the Lord is going to have His revenge, man. Okay. And the first crop of slaves are going to be these elites. All right. And Yahweh Shai is going to have them as slaves. It says to bind their kings with chains. Okay. And their nobles with fetters of iron. And this proves that the elites have to go into slavery. That the elites. The, you know, of these uh, elite banking families, the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, you know, uh, you know, these elite families of Esau, Edom, they're going to have to, their kings and their nobles, they're going to be bound with chains, right? And fetters of iron. All right. It says to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, praise ye the Lord. Because slavery is scriptural. The scriptures speak about he that leadeth into captivity shall go. Let's get that scripture. Revelation 13, 9 and 10. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Right? And he that killeth with the sword, right, must be killed with the sword. All right? And what would, you know, what's Esau's blessing? Esau's blessing is a sword. When you read uh, Genesis, the 27th chapter, it goes into all of that from the verse 38 on down. It tells you what Esau, Edom's blessing is. And he was given that blessing by his father Isaac, which is Yahweh Shai, if you can receive it. 
All right, so the Lord gave him his blessing and the Lord is going to take him out. Okay, it says he that killeth with the sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And there goes that word saints again. Going back to Psalms 149 and 5, let the saints be joyful in glory. Now, when you go to one chapter before this, the scriptures will tell you who the saints are. All right, Psalms 148 and 13, it says, let them praise the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, for his name alone is excellent. And that proves that we have to know the name. The scripture says, what is his name and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Okay, it says his glory is above the he the earth and the heaven. So we're supposed to praise the name of the Lord. The scriptures tell you that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Okay, so the name is very, very important. Okay, especially in these last days. If you ain't calling upon the name of the Lord in these last days, you ain't receiving salvation. If you're calling upon Jesus Christ in these last days, you ain't going to be saved. Okay. The elect ain't going to be calling on Jesus Christ. How do we know that? The scriptures tell us that in um, in Baruch, that in the land of our captivities, we're going to remember ourselves. In fact, let's get that real quick. Uh, was it Baruch? Is it two or is it? Let's see if it's two. Yeah, this is Baruch chapter two, verse 30. It says, for I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And why would we have to remember ourselves? Because this cap this captivity that we've been in, you know, under Esau, you know, in these last days, this is the only captivity where we didn't really know who we are as a people. Okay, the scripture tell you that in uh, Isaiah the first chapter, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doeth not know; my people doth not consider. And another scripture to back that up is the fact that we. You know, we discontinue from our heritage. All right. Isn't that in Jeremiah uh, 17 and 4? It says, And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. So we move to the Lord to wrath. All right. So we're serving a punishment right now, being. You know, uh, prisoners of war, POWs, if you will, and that's why we got nothing to celebrate about. All right, being in this, in the, under this man's rulership, being, you know, this, this is the rulership of the wicked. Okay, you have that saying, a, a so-called white man's heaven as a so-called black man's hell. Okay, that's just a saying. All right, so we need to get out of this, this, this place. Which not all Israelites are so-called black people. Hey, you got uh, chocolate-covered Edomites. Okay, how about that? You got uh, uh the, the tears. Okay, but that's another lesson for another time. All right, you you also got Israelites that are scattered among these other nations, and they look like the, the nations where they've been scattered amongst, and that's also a part of the curses. The Lord said He was going to scatter us among all nations, and that there we're going to serve idols of of wood and stone. All right, but the point is, thou shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. So we've discontinued from our heritage, man. Another scripture. Man, all these scriptures are coming to mind. Um, is uh, let's get Hosea. Is it one and straight to the point? Hosea one and ten. It says, "Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people." Okay, and that's being said today. All right, they don't believe that they were the real Israelites, that we're the real chosen people of the Lord. All right, that's where it's being. Where is it being said? Babylon the Great. All right, and all throughout the all throughout the world, they don't believe that we're not the chosen people of the Lord. Okay, but in the land, right, in a place where it said unto them, "Ye are not my people," there shall it be said unto them, "Ye are the sons of the living power." Okay, and that's how you know that you know we're in these last days because we know who we are as a people. Now we've woken up through the Spirit, which is a miracle in itself. Okay, the Lord said that after three days and a half that the spirit of life was going to enter into, into us and stand, we we're going to stand upon our feet, an exceeding great army. Okay, uh, let's get one more. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. So we fell away, man. All right, we discontinued from our heritage. Okay, but now we're, we're coming back to who we are as a people. We remember. All right. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. 
All right, the son of perdition, which perdition means destruction, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called the Most High or that is worship. And that fits Esau to a T. That's E. You know, that's the wicked. That's the pride of Esau. And the scripture says, The pride of thine heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. So Esau's proud, but guess what? He's going to be brought down. And that's why he's steady trying to set up his new world order agenda. All right, and he's moving with great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. That's in Revelation 12 and 12. He's exalting himself above the Most High. But guess what? The Lord is going to show him that he's just a man. Like the scriptures tell you in Ezekiel 28. All right. It says, so that he sit, uh, so that he as the Most High sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is a power. Okay. So that's the pride of Esau. But the point is, there was a falling away first. To go back to the scripture in Baruch 2 and 30, for I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And we're remembering ourselves now. All right. It says, um, and I shall and shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, their power, for I will give them an heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me. How are you going to praise the heavenly father, you know, uh, through his son, if you don't know his name? OK, you're not praising the Lord if you're if you're calling upon Jesus Christ, if you're calling on Allah or, or Buddha or Vishnu or any of these other gods of these heathen nations that these heathen nations bow down and worship. You're not praising the Lord, OK, with these false idols. OK, and the Lord, you have to praise him with his true name. The scripture says, uh, no, there is no salvation um, in any other uh, whereby we must be saved. Let's get that real quick. Uh, Acts the fourth chapter and the twelfth verse. Acts four and twelve it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven. Alright? None other name under heaven given among men. So this name has been given to us, man. Alright, the scripture says a man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. Okay, whereby we must be saved. Was not Moses, you know, our forefather Moses, was he not given the name? Okay, of course he was given the name. And the Lord said, this is my name unto all generations. All right, the Lord don't change. And the name, his name is Yahweh and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ. Okay, so there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. All right, so it's a must to call upon the names of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Uh, let's see if I can get um, uh, uh, Isaiah 12 and 4. And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Call upon his name, right? Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. So his name is has to be exalted and he's going to put respect on his name because his name has been polluted all right um the scriptures tell you that you know is it ezekiel 36 the lord is going to sanctify his name okay just like in the time of egypt when he brought down pharaoh and his armies the lord did that that he may magnify that he magnified his name okay so it's nothing new with this kingdom and you know this is the thing all the previous kingdoms that were set up before this one they all rose to a certain height and they all came crashing down. And it's no different to Esau's kingdom. And that's why you got the prophets out there on the highways and the byways prophesying the downfall of this wicked kingdom. Because the prophets were always back here prophesying against a wicked kingdom of, of, uh, of war, evil and pestilence. Jeremiah 28 and 8. All right. It says, and, and uh, back in Baruch chapter 2, verse 31, And shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh their power. For I will give them an heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. All right. So we're thinking upon the name of the Lord in the land of our captivity. OK. So going back to. Um, we took a slight detour <laughs> or more like a major detour, but hey, nonetheless, a hey, spirit. You know, we're going to need to go through them, them precepts. So that's what it is. All right. So back in Psalms. So now proving back and going back to the saints. OK. Um, yeah. Psalms 148 and 13. All right. And this is why we went into the name just from this one precept alone. 
All right, does not the scripture say through thy precepts I get understanding? Okay, it says Psalms 148 and 13. So proving who the saints are, let them praise the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. For his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and the heaven. He also exhorteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the sons of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. So that's who the saints are, the Israelites. And that's a special people to the Lord. All right, the, the scriptures tell you that he that touch of you, touch of the apple of mine eye. The Lord chose us to be a special people to himself above all nations that are upon the face of the earth. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Okay, and I brought out just to back up the points of the, who the saints are. The scriptures speak about the patience and the faith of the saints, right? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. You know, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now you know who the saints are. So going back to Revelation 20. And two, and he laid hold on a dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now, this dragon represents Esau. And you read about the dragon, uh, or oh, represents the, the Roman Empire, but it also represents uh, Esau's power structure today. All right, and it says that old serpent, okay, when you're dealing with the, uh, the garden, when you're dealing with the garden, and you had the serpent that came to Eve, okay, that, that state, that same spirit, Right, that was on that man in the garden coming to, to, to the weaker vessel, Eve. That same spirit is back here today. Okay, the same spirit of the wicked, the same spirit, you know, that, that was on Cain, the same spirit that's uh, on Esau, these Edomites that, uh, that are uh, here today, walking around today. They got the spirit, you know, of, of the wicked on them. Okay, they are the, of the sons of the wicked. All right, in fact, there's a scripture. Um, Let's see if we can get that scripture. Uh, they are poison. Uh, let me see. Is it Psalms? Yep, they're Psalms 58 and 4. Let me start from 3. It says, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Okay, and what did Cain do? Okay, uh, the spirit of the wicked man. What did Cain do? He slew his brother Abel. And then when the Lord pretty much... when uh, Abel's blood You know his spirit Was crying unto The heavenly father You know The lord asked Cain Where is thy brother And he said look I know not Am I thy brother's keeper You know So first of all He, he lied you No know, he murdered Abel He murdered his brother So he's a murderer And then secondly He lied to the heavenly father So that's the spirit Of the wicked The same spirit Of the wicked That's on the earth today man That same wicked ass The sons of the wicked It says their poison Is like the poison Of a serpent They are like the death Adder that stoppeth her ear. Okay, so their poison is like the poison. Dealing with who? The wicked. All right, and how do we know that's talking about Esau, Edom? Let's go to Malachi 1 and 4. Okay, telling you who the wicked actually is. Their poison, the wicked's poison, is like the poison of a serpent, man. Okay, the dragon, the old serpent, says it. It's all connecting together. This is Malachi 1 and 3. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. So they have returned and built the desolate places. Okay. And through their Renaissance period, they ain't stopped building. Okay. And the scriptures tell you in Psalms 49 and 11, that their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. See, that's how proud Esau is. They got all this technology. They got all this pride. But guess what? The Lord said that he's going to uh, uh, basically... He's appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Okay. It says, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, Yahweh Barshem Yahweh Shai of hosts, which means the Lord of the armies. They shall build, but I will throw down and they shall call them the border of wickedness. Okay. And the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. So the Lord has a righteous anger against these Edomites forever, man. All right. But the point is, they are known as the borders of wickedness. So that's who the wicked are. And the wicked are what? Estranged from the womb. They go astray as, as soon as they be born, speaking lies. And you saw that with Cain. All right? And how he lied to the heavenly father after slewing his brother Abel. All right? And that's the same spirit that's on Esau today. Okay? So and laid, so he laid, back in Revelation 20 and 2, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years 
Okay, so after you know Esau, you had the pagan Roman Empire. That's when Esau got bound a thousand years. Okay, and the scripture said that. that and afterwards, what? In fact, I'm jumping the gun a little bit. Let's first of all let's go into the dragon. First of all, let's go into uh, Revelation 17. Because um, you got to deal with what the you know the the beast. Okay. Um, let's start from. Uh, let's start from eight. It says the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Okay, remember the bottomless pit represented Europe. Okay, because you had them European colonies that went over there and colonized, you know, over there in the Americas. Okay, so you have, you know, the system that you see today, the B system, which is consisted of NATO and the EU. Okay, that pretty much, you know, uh, you know, America came out of them European colonies coming over to the Americas, man. All right, mainly out of Britain. Okay. But it says that it shall go into perdition. Remember we read in the book of 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, that, that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So perdition means destruction. So Esau, he can't do anything against his truth, man. Okay, like he's going to go into perdition. He's going to be destroyed. And there's nothing that he can do about it. And that bottomless pit, right, represents Europe. Okay, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. And that's another thing, the elect. You know, they are predestined to receive salvation from, Ye from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is going to gather up his elect, man. All right. That's in Matthew, uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter and the 30th verse on down. OK, it says, and when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. OK, the beast that was and is not and yet is the, uh, the beast that was. Uh, was it the Roman Empire? Uh, uh, and is not and yet is Right And yet is The Roman Empire It says um, When they beheld the beast that was and is not and yet is And here is the mind which have wisdom The seven heads are seven mountains Which a mountain represents a government where the which, uh, On the which the woman sitteth Okay Alright so let's read that again It says whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world Okay That they that dwell on the earth Shall wonder Whose names were not written In the book of life man So that's To have your name written In the book of life That's for the elect Okay So those whose names Are not written in the book of life They're through They're, they're gonna be You know The wicked of our people Whose names are not written In the book of life man They're gonna be ashamed They're gonna be destroyed On this side They're gonna come back Through the seed of the elect In the kingdom all right, because their name was not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. All right, you, you go into, um, and that's predestination right there. The Lord has ordained predestination for the elect to receive salvation. And that's in Ephesians, uh, the first chapter and the, uh, the fourth verse. It says, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us, Unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai HaMashiach to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So this is all about the good pleasure of the Lord's will. That's why the scripture says, blessed is he in whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. Okay. And this is all done before the foundation of the world. So the elect, it's not possible to deceive the very elect. So back in Revelation 17 and 8, it says, and when they beheld the beast that was and is not and yet is, the one that yet is, is the Roman Empire. Okay. Because at the time, um, at the time that this was written, this was during the time of the Roman Empire. Okay, John the Revelator was on the Isle of Patmos. Okay, I believe it was what around ninety six A.D. All right, and the beast re re uh, consists of NATO and the EU. Because he says, and is not because it wasn't that time for NATO and the EU. NATO and the EU didn't exist back then. Okay, but now it is here. Okay, so that's the beast. So when you read about the beast in the, Revel in the book of Revelation, that's talking about NATO and the EU. That's Esau, Edom's, you know, whole system, his power structure. He's the beast, you know, his war machine. All right. It says, and here is the mind that have wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains, which a mountain represents a government. That's why you have something called uh, a G7 summit meeting. All right, where you have a... Uh, 
A summit is a, what, a peak of a mountain. Okay. So a seven a mountain represents a government. All right. And the seven heads. All right. Uh, on the which the woman sitteth. All right. And these seven heads, and it's going to go into it. It says, and there are seven kings, five are fallen. Okay. So the seven kings, then the five which were fallen, the five were fallen, which were Germanian major, Germanian minor, the French, the Spanish, and the Greeks. Okay. And the and one is, and the one that is, is talking about the Roman Empire. Because remember, at the time that John the Revelator had received this, you know, it was during the time of the Roman Empire. He got sent over to the Isle of Patmos, which I believe is a Greek island, uh, like the salt mines. Okay. And the other, and this is why the Lord, you know, pretty much kept John alive, so he could, you know, pretty much record down the book of Revelation. All right. It says, and the other is not yet come. What's this other which is not yet come? That's talking about Great Britain. All right. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. All right. So Great Britain, you know, the scripture said it must continue a short space. And the five that were fallen, the one is, remember that the one that is the Roman Empire, the one that has not yet come is Great Britain. And when he come, if he must continue a short space, which they did, right? And the beast uh, that was and is not, even he is the eighth, okay? And is of the seven and goeth into perdition, okay? The beast is talking about NATO and the EU, even he is the eighth, Okay, because, um, you know, you had uh, America and its conception that came out of these European nations. All right. Mainly Britain. Okay. You had the um, War of Independence. You had the Spanish-American War, the French-American War. But then you also had the uh, American War of Independence when they pretty much broke off. All right. And secretly, you got the uh, elites of Esau Edom, the Rothschilds that pretty much secretly rule behind the scenes from Britain. Okay. But the point is. You know, they're going to go into perdition. So they're going to be destroyed. Okay. So going back to Revelation 20. And verse uh, 2. All right. It says, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Okay. This ain't talking about uh, the spiritual demon Satan. This is talking about Esau, Edom, the physical counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan. And he was bound for a thousand years. Remember, you're talking about the pagan Roman Empire. Because you had, uh, uh, I think it was Nerva, who was, uh, uh, you know, a, a Jake coming up into the power. But you still had, you know, at that time when Nerva was, was you know, emperor, you still had the uh, the Roman structure, you know, of the of the uh, the Edomites that was still in place. So it didn't fully, the, the, the thousand years didn't fully kick in until you get around the time of Constantine. Okay. And then you later had it turn into what the Holy Roman Empire. Okay. Which was Constantine was around, I believe it was 325 AD. And that thousand year period, you know, um, uh, which let me not jump the gun. Let's keep on reading. It says, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years should be fulfilled. Okay, and after that, he must be loosed a little season. This little season is talking about the Renaissance, which the word Renaissance means rebirth. The rebirth of what? Esau Edom's power structure. Okay, and that's when he was loosed. All right, remember I told you the thousand years, you're going all the way back to Constantine. I believe it was a free, uh, let's have a look. I think it was free, uh, uh, free 20, uh, Constantine, Constantine the Great, okay, Roman Empire, uh, it said it reigned from 306 to 337 AD, all right, so around that time period, all right, and he died 22nd of May, 337 AD, so from this time period, <coughs> excuse me, you're dealing with a thousand year period going up all the way to the Renaissance, which is when Esau was least released for that little season. You're dealing with what the uh, the uh, mid to late 1300s. Esau started creeping up there into power. But the key, the key year is when they took down Constantinople. All right. Um, which which I believe was around four, uh, 1453. 
All right, by uh, uh, the Ottoman Turks. I believe his name was Mehmet II. Mehmet. Uh, let's just type in Mehmet II Constant. Constantinople. Let's see what happens. It says Mehmet the, Mehmet the Conqueror expanded the Ottoman Empire, leading the siege of Constantinople in 1453 and extending the empire's reach into the Balkans. See, because prior to this, you had Jake that was ruling uh, throughout the, uh, in the, they call it the Dark Ages. All right, you had Jake that was ruling for that thousand year period. All right, and you have a term called iconoclasm, which goes into, again, the wicked, being the wicked that he is. The scriptures tell you that um, in Job 9 and 24, um, it says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? And who is the main judge? All right. It's, it's the heavenly father. And they covered up his face. And get what did they put there? They put the face of a so-called white man there. All right. You had these uh, commissioned, you know, these painters that were commissioned uh, to pretty much paint these images of the Heavenly Father, you know, um, would you call it, I think it was Michelangelo that painted something called the Finger of God, and you had the Heavenly Father, you know, pretty much, you know, naked, you know, uh, uh, let me see if I can get it, um, see what you're about to witness now is Renaissance art, Finger of God, It says the finger of God, a phrase uh, <clears throat> used in the Bible, is you. Let me see. You just type in finger of God painter. That might come up. Lucky, bear with me. Right, here we go. It says the creation of Adam, uh, <clears throat> Italian uh, Crezioni di Ad Adamo. All right, is a fresco painting by an Italian artist, Michelangelo. Okay, which forms part of the Sistine Chapel ceiling painted in 1508 to 1512. That's Renaissance art. Okay, because remember, after he was loose for that little season, he saw. Pretty much, that's iconoclasm, which the word iconoclasm means uh, uh, image breaker. And that's what Esau did. All right. And this illustrates the, uh, you know, what he's done is he's painted the heavenly father and he gave him like a pink see-through top. You know. So that's, that's, you know, that's completely off, man. And the heavenly father don't look like this. Okay. And he put him in pink and that's Esau. That's the devil, man. Okay, that's the devil for you. And why does he do that? Because he is the wicked. That's why the scripture says, Job 9, 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So if it ain't, ain't Esau that did this, then who else is it? Which other nation did that? Because when you, you know, in the rulership and you take down another nation, you know, it wouldn't make sense to leave up their image, you know, because remember, we ruled in the dark ages. So our images was all over the place. That's why you have something... Known as the Russian icons. Alright, which they couldn't completely cover up all the images, the Dark Age images. Alright, so some still uh some still exist today. Alright, but the point of the matter is Esau tried to cover them up. Alright, through something known as iconoclasm. Now we're gonna go into the word iconoclasm. Iconoclasm. Etymology. Let's get the etymology of that word and see what happens. All right, so the word iconoclast, this is breaker or destroyer of images. Okay. Uh, this is late Greek, uh, iconoclastes from icon. Uh, this is image and clastes means breaker. So image breaker. So that's what Esau did. Okay, you have a term called iconoclasm, which means image breaker. And that's exactly what Esau did, man. All right, and he painted over our images. All right, because we were ruling in the Dark Ages, and that's why. Let me go get ahead and get First Maccabees three forty eight. <clears throat> we can round up the lesson in a little while. It says, "And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint 
the likeness of their images. And we just had an example of that through the uh, Italian painter Michelangelo. And he painted what the, the so-called, in the Sistine Chapel, the, uh, the finger of God. And they put the Heavenly Father in a white, in a white, like, uh, sort of toga-looking thing. All right? Like see-through. Which is complete blasphemy. All right? And, you know, and just for that alone, Esau deserves to be put the fuck down. All right? But that's the point. All right? So he was... Let's go back into Revelation 20 and 3 and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more until the sea Esau is being exposed <clears throat> in these last days, man. All right. And um, all of this is coming out, all right, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Because Esau, he rules with deception. And like I said, his power came from secrecy, but that secret is no longer a secret. All right, he's being exposed, man. He's being made bare, like it says in Isaiah 47 on down. All right, it says, Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. All right, the thousand years, the so-called dark ages, all right, where Jake, Israelites, ruled throughout all throughout Europe, man. The dark ages. All right, and I believe the law, one of the last strongholds of, uh, you had the Moors, uh, which, uh, when you go to the Moors, uh, uh, you had the... Uh, Moors goes back to the word Moreno, which means dark or black. Okay? And you even had the Moors that were ruling in, um, was it Sardinia? If you look at the Sardinian flag, it's a straight-up so-called black man. Right? With a, uh, with, a band with a bandage tied around his eyes. All right? So symbolizing that we were conquered because they changed it. All right? Because, um, let me just type it, Sardinian flag. <clears throat> right, the flag of Sardinia, you see it? It's a straight up so called black man. Okay? Hoop earrings and that got bandana got bandana on and look what it was changed to, having the bandana put over his eyes. And that's a straight up so called black man with Afro type hair. Alright, so that proves that, you know, that flag of Sardinia, they still got it. It says the the flag of Sardinia called the flag of the four Moors. Okay. Which Moors goes back to Moreno. Uh, let's type in Moreno uh, In Spanish or Portuguese Nickname for someone with dark hair And swarthy complexion Okay, a swarthy complexion What's swarthy? Swarthy, it says dark complexioned Okay, dark complexioned man So you can't tell me That this ain't talking about Israelites man Jakes that were ruling And I believe one of the last stronghold of the Moors Was in Granada And uh <laughs> I think that fell in 14, uh, 14, was it 1473, forgive me if I'm not mistaken, you know, I'm, you know, the dates, I'm not the best with the dates, but hey, but the point is, you know, the Moors were Israelites, man, and they were just basically going off, they were worshipping, you know, they were into Islam, basically, okay, but anyway, look man, that's it, I'm gonna leave it there, alright, um, I just wanted to touch on the first few verses, in Revelation the 20th chapter And I pray this was an edifying lesson <coughs> So now you know what the bottomless pit is Now you know what the thousand years is And now you know what the little season is as well Alright um, And pretty much you know We're in that renaissance period Which the word renaissance again means rebirth Rebirth of Esau Edom's power structure Alright But the Lord is going to stop him He's going to take him out Alright In fact let's close out with that scripture Let's go to uh, Job chapter 14 and 5 And it says Seeing his days are determined The number of his months are with thee Thou has appointed his bounds That he cannot pass So Esau has bounds appointed That he just can't pass man And we're coming to that time Alright And the scripture says The saints are the most high Which we went into Who the saints are Which are the Israelites The saints are the most high Shall take the kingdom Alright And shall possess the kingdom Alright So let's um, In fact let's uh, Damn let's get one more um, we're in a time of a transfer of feral of rulership. Uh, let's get Sirach ten and uh, and eight. It says that because of unrighteous dealings, injuries. All right, yeah, hardcore slavery. You know what Esau has done, uh, and is still doing to us to this day. You know, uh, hardcore. It says because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom. 
is translated from one people to another. And why is it rich is got by the seat? Because everything that Esau has, he stole. All right, and he's even trying to, you know, put himself up there like he's the the chosen people of the Lord. All right, but he's not. Them so called Jews over there in the land of Israel today, they are the descendants of Esau, you know, particularly of the tribe of Amalek. All right, the so called Jews, and they are not the real chosen people of the Lord, man. All right, and they're all going into slavery. All right, along with the other nations, but starting with the nation of Esau, Edom, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. The kingdom is about to be translated from one people to another. So with that, Lord willing, you know, you were edified and uplifted with this lesson. I want to say, Kahala Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Rechakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone of all well, and Shalawam to the elect.